Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. I'm back here at Sioka Subaru and Ewing this time to check out a brand new 2023 Subaru Ascent. This is the top touring trim. So let's dig in. All right, the front end of this Ascent, the color is crystal black silica. I think it looks good. It matches the grille perfectly with that gloss black grille. The Subaru badge in the middle with that silver trim. We have LED headlights, LED daytime running lamps, standard turn signals, LED fog lamps, functionality on the grille, top and bottom. Overall, it's a handsome looking front end. All right, wheel and tire package on this ascent. We have a 20 inch wheel, gunmetal gray, silver accents, five hole wheel, reminiscent to me of maybe what Alfa Romeo has done over the years with their wheels. A little different style though. We have all season tires, 245 on the width, the 50 series sidewall, 20s, ventilated rotor, standard brakes, all four corners, all wheel drive. Full side profile of this Ascent Touring, it is a large SUV. This is a mid-size three row SUV. This is Subaru's largest vehicle. I like the overall design is very conservative. And with the black and the silver, it is very classic presentation in this to top touring trim. And I kind of like that rather than being a little bit too wild because you're trying to appeal to many different people since this is the only three row midsize SUV that Subaru makes. They have to try to appeal to everybody as best they can. And I think this is about as good as they could have done with this design. As we move in closer, as you can see, we have flat black along the wheel arches. Top trim, I maybe would have liked to seen this body color. We are chrome around here, which doesn't match this chrome on the window trim. So it's a very odd choice, I think, right here by Subaru to do that. We do have LED turn signals, 360 degree camera. It's right underneath there. As we move down the side, we have chrome finish on the front and rear door handle, chrome finish down along the bottom of the door sills. We have a right side fuel filler cap, and up top, we're color matched with that shark fin antenna and a panoramic sunroof. All right, rear end time here on this ascent, and I think this looks pretty good too. We have a very small spoiler coming off the roof, our windshield wiper is down below because there's no room to tuck it in up top. We have LED taillights, LED brake lights, standard turn signals, Subaru badge in the middle with some silver trim, again giving it that classic look. Subaru all-wheel drive badge on the left, the Ascent Touring badge on the right, flat black around the bumper, and then we have a functional dual exhaust. So let's see how this thing sounds. All right, under the hood of this 2023 Ascent, what are we looking at for power plant? What we have here is a 2.4 liter turbocharged four cylinder boxer engine made it to a CVT transmission, 260 horsepower, 277 pound feet of torque, MPGs, 19 in the city, 25 on the highway, 21 combined, the engine's minimum octane rating is 87, so you can run this on regular unleaded gas. All right, we are inside this 2023 Subaru Ascent Touring. The big dog in the Ascent lineup, the top trim. Before we get to the interior, and it's a really nice interior with some upgraded tech with one glaring omission, which we'll get to when we do the interior. You're going to want to know, Mike, how much does this cost? Well, MSRP, the way this one is optioned, you're looking at $50,222. So let's check out the interior. All right, foot box action. We have a nice large dead pedal brake and accelerator, all rubberized finish. The all weather floor mats with the Subaru name on them. Down here we have the plastic kick plate with Subaru on it. We have power seats for the driver and front passenger. And then we have black leather. Black leather trimmed with white cross stitch, very nice. 
very supple, feels good to the touch. It's a very nice black interior here in this Ascent. All right, we're gonna do the door panel from the other side of the car since I'm getting a lot of sun glare. So basically what we're looking at here, I think is a nice looking door panel. You got soft touch material up top. You have that nice wood finish, almost like an open pour or stained wood look, which I think looks really good. We have two memory seat settings for the driver, chrome door handle, some nice perforated black leather on the insert with the cross stitch, nice soft armrest, flat black on the switch gear. I think it is a really attractive door panel here in this ascent. All right, dashboard up here. We have soft touch material up here. We have a heat and air vent, nice leather with cross stitch and nice area here to store some stuff, which looks good. We do have a nice large glove block right down there. And this does have the optional Harman Kardon sound system. All right, here's the infotainment system that we've seen in other new 2023 models. We got the 11.6 inch vertical display Subaru Starlink system that is integrated into the dash, which I'd like, but I do like the landscape one better than the, than the uh, portrait one. Let me know what you think. This has got all the bells and whistles in it. This has got your wireless Apple CarPlay, your wireless Android Auto. It's got navigation by hitting your map button. How does it respond? Uh, it's a little slow. A little slow, should be better than that. Should be better than that. So we're gonna give that a B minus. We do have heated and ventilated seats for both the driver and front passenger. You can actually then hit your home button and then you can go into your vehicle settings and you can set up the vehicle however you would like. You have your Wi-Fi hotspot right there. You can go back to your home button you can go into your uh, other apps to Bluetooth your phone and whatnot. And let's see if I can get back to this one again. If I go into my car settings, this is where I have to go to get into my X modes, the snow and dirt or deep snow and mud or drive in normal. There is no separate X mode button. Everything is done within this infotainment screen, which I, I don't like the best. There, I think there's too much inside this screen, but it is what it is. And I'll tell you, the heated seats in here are really, really nice. But overall, not bad. As we hit reverse, there we go with our backup camera, 360 view. And then we have this view from the back, which is this extra view that they give you. So you got a tri-view display here. Nice clarity, really nice with trajectory really nice i like that quite a bit and now as we put it back into park cancel that we also have a separate menu up top so we have dual panel action and you just hit this and you can go to the next the next uh menu the next menu the next menu here's your ux modes you can get to them up here as well so a lot of different stuff that you can get to but again all contained within this screen moving down we do have a nice area for storage right here and then here we have our camera view button and then here we have an aux jack a usb-c and a usb-a more nice of the stained wood finish two cup holders Subaru key fob, which is looking a lot better than the Solteras that we did yesterday. We have lock. The Subaru emblem is unlock. Pop the tailgate panic button. Nice weight. Nicely done. The gear shift right here, plain and simple, to go through the eight simulated gears in the CVT. Our electric parking brake. Here is our nice soft center armrest, leather and cross stitch. We have a nice removable tray and more storage down below with felt lining. Subaru steering wheel, nice leather wrap steering wheel with cross stitch, flat black on the switch gear, Subaru badge in the middle, nice brushed aluminum finish down below. On the left, we have our telephone and voice commands. On the right, we have our safety suite and adaptive cruise control commands. We have paddles here to go up and down the simulated gears on the CVT transmission. We then have over here our, on the left stock is our controls for our headlight 
and fog lamps. And on the right are both of our windshield wipers. Down below here, pop the tailgate, bright and dim the dash. All right, dashboard action. We have an analog digital combo, analog gauges for your speedometer, tachometer, fuel level and coolant temperature, and then a small display in the center, which will take you through different information like digital miles per hour, range to tank, odometer readings, uh, trip uh, odometer, that kind of thing, instant miles per gallon, exterior temperature, all in that smaller thing. Again, the competition, particularly Kia and Hyundai with the Telluride and Palisade are going digital dashes in their 2023s. This still does not have one. So Subaru a bit behind the, uh, behind the curve when it comes to their dash. All right, overhead console time. And if you want these LED interior lights to come on when you open and close the door, this switch has to be over to the left that on the side that says door. So now when you open the door, your lights come on. And when you close the door, your lights will go out. Here are the controls for our panoramic roof. So you just hit that. Hold it down a second and the shade will go all the way back. Like that. And then the next one is the actual roof. So you can hold that down a second and the roof will go back all the way behind and stop right there at the driver. You wanna close it, you just push it the other way, one click and over that one will come. And then you wanna close the shade. There we go, sorry about that. Didn't hit it quite long enough, it'll go halfway. Then you hit it again and it'll come all the way. So a little cumbersome compared to others, but they do have the panoramic roof. Here we go with our sun visor, vanity. Slide it back, yes siree, good to go there. All right, rear view mirror action, and why am I showing you this? Right now we have it set standard. You pull this little button forward, and now we got our camera on, baby, and we got the full digital rear view mirror. Looking awesome, great job on that Subaru. We got the updated Subaru EyeSight technology right in here with updated cameras for pedestrian safety, which is always good. Subaru always are erring on the side of safety. Love the digital rear view camera. That's a one up right now on the Kia Telluride for sure. All right, power fold side view mirrors, this button right up top. You push that in, mirrors will fold in, push it again, the mirrors will fold back out and they will fold in when you lock the car, nice. All right, we've gone through this center console and like I mentioned earlier, what tech are we missing? We're missing a wireless charging pad. I've looked all over. I've asked the salesman. It doesn't have it. So Subaru can include a digital rear view mirror, but they can't put in a couple of hundred dollar wireless charging pad in the touring trim. That is a big problem. They need to put one in. Let me know what you think in the comments. All right, we are in the back of this Subaru Ascent, and I got plenty of room here in the mid-row. Mid-row captain's chairs. Plenty of headroom, plenty of shoulder width room. The seat is set for my driving position. Plenty of knee space. I like the consistency of design. The door panels here, same action as we have in the front. And we also have the sunshade that will go up. So you can see up, but nobody can see in. But again, like I've said on others, if you're not using it, have it down because the spring will wear out. And if you leave it up all the time, it's just gonna flop like this and look like crap. So keep it tucked in when you're not using it. All right, center console for the rear seat passengers. We got a command center going on here without a doubt. We have uh, climate control for the back seat passengers. We have two stage heated seats for both captain's chairs in the back, which is nice. We do have a home power source, USB-C, USB-A, and two cup holders drop out of the bottom. So they got you covered there in the back. Seat pockets behind each front seat, nice. And then the trick on these armrests, armrests, nice width, and they're not ratcheting, which I hate. So nicely done on the armrest Subaru. And then we have the all season mats back here as well. 
But overall, from the mid row, it is a nice place to be. All right, third row action in this Subaru. And what do we do? We're going to come back here. We're going to hit the button mark number one right there. Lift it up and the seat moves out of the way. Nice wide space. And then we're just going to step right in. Nice and easy to get into. So now we're back here in the third row. I got plenty of headroom. Knees are a little high. Knee space is going to be tight. So small adults and kids shouldn't have a problem. I have a cup holder, I got some speakers back here, but the odd thing is, is that I there are a, there's a USB on the right side, but no USB on the left side in the third row. So that is odd. All right, here's the right side, and here's what I mean. Here's the USB action, right here, two of them, but there's nothing on the left side at all, which means, as the left side passenger, I have to take my phone wire and lay it across the person next to me to get into that USB since there's two of them. So it's an odd setup for that in the back, but I do have heat and air vents and I do have speakers and I do have cup holders. All right, rear end tailgate time in the ascent. You can either pop it from the key fob or from the dash or back here, there is a third way. You just push the button underneath a couple of beeps, nice electric assist on the way up. Nice electric assist on the way down right here. And with the third row up, we have a good amount of space. Not huge amounts, but good amount of space for smaller bags and whatnot. We do have the carpeted floor mats right here that say touring, which is nice. Underneath here, lift that up. You do have a security shade you can use. Right now it's stowed and more storage. And underneath that, some jacks and tools and whatnot. We have that big subwoofer here in the back for the Harman Kardon sound system as well as some tie downs, as well as some lighting and a 12 volt. So they got you covered for power. Third row down, no problem. Take this, pull this strap, push it forward. Pull the strap, push it forward. Now we have even more space to get these, our larger items in. The mid row will go down from the side of each door to fold them flat, but you can't do it from the tailgate like I would prefer. I think it would be a lot easier if Subaru installed some levers to get that mid-row down from back here, but you can put it down from either All side. All right, here's the window sticker on this 2023 Ascent. Feel free to pause the video, stop, zoom in, see everything that's optioned into this car. And now let's take it out for a spin. All right, we are out and about, zipping around in this 2023 Ascent. And first things first, that well, it drives a lot like the 2022 Ascent. <laughs> but uh, it is very stable on the ground. Obviously, you're sitting higher up. It's a larger SUV than what I'm accustomed to uh, from Subaru. Uh, it's got plenty of power with this uh, turbocharged 2.4 liter. Uh, 260 and 277 on the torque is going to get the job done uh, for a vehicle this size. It is very numb on the steering as to be expected. This is not a performance car. It is a, a, uh, a people hauler, an errand runner, commuter, that kind of thing. Visibility is great. This digital rear view mirror is fantastic. Love it. Um, I think that's great they put it in this touring trim. It is easy to see out of everywhere. There are no blind spots whatsoever. Everything is easy to get to in the interior, uh, including the infotainment system and everything else. We have all the Subaru EyeSight technology in here, blind spot monitoring, cross traffic alert, lane keep assist, traffic sign recognition, speed limit alerts, active collision braking, pedestrian stuff. I mean, it's got everything you can think of in here as far as safety equipment, which is to be expected for a Subaru. But overall, I really like how this car drives down the road. It's really stable, it's really smooth. The CVT transmission is really quiet. No issues there. You know, it uh, it performs fine. Obviously, 
it's not going to shift the same way as a regular automatic transmission and every Subaru high-end Subaru that has this CVT in here I do you know I pick on it because a CVT really shouldn't be in a $50,000 car you should have a regular automatic transmission and I'm still going to hold to that because I can't criticize the other Subaru models for the CVT and not and not do that here especially since this is a $50,000 vehicle which is next to the Solterra the most expensive vehicle Subaru sells uh, but uh, but it works the CVT works it's smooth it's quiet gets the vehicle up to speed without any vice versa uh, you have your your X modes for the snow and the mud and the dirt and all that if you get into any situations where you're up in the mountains or you live in the north and you need you have a lot of snow that's this car is going to be this vehicle is going to be able to handle that no problem uh, and uh, you know I think it's just fine the way it sits no, it's not going to blow you away it's just going to get you down the road the way you would expect a, a vehicle of this size to get you down the road. And it's going to drive just fine. Uh, but when you need it to, it's going to do a heck of a job helping you out of bad situations via snowstorms, going up into the mountains, going off road to go camping, hitting some trails. It's going gonna, it's gonna to perform well there. Uh, so I think that Subaru has done a nice job here overall is it as competitive in the segment as the hot selling telluride or palisade i think that's up for you to decide but it's certainly a, a, an suv you should test drive if you're looking at a mid row a mid-sized three-row suv now we're going to go ahead and hit the emergency brake see how she does nice stop nice and linear no issues no pull of the wheel at all and now we're going to take off And we're up to speed and down the road again. No problem, no issue. See, the CVT is, is going to be, it's not going to have those crisp shifts, obviously, because there's no gears in it, even though it has simulated gears. I wouldn't do much with the paddles here. I don't think this car needs paddles, and I don't think people are going to use the paddles. Let me know if you disagree and you have an ascent and you rock it with paddles. Let me know. But I think most people are just going to drive it in normal mode like I am now. And, uh, zip around and do their thing and uh, for that i think it's a very uh, a very competitive entry into this market and if you're looking at palisade telluride High highlander pilot you know put the ascent on your list at least give it a test drive and decide for yourself i do want to thank Sioka subaru and ewing for providing access to this vehicle for a review today i would also like to thank all of you for watching if you enjoyed this video please give it a like Please also consider subscribing and turning on that notification bell so you'll never miss another Shabby's Rides video. And I'll see all of you on the rebound. Take care, everyone.